So, you've decided to study astrophysics. First of all, nice job. You have, in my mind, decided to study one of the most fascinating and interesting fields of science there is to study. But after studying astrophysics for three years at university, I've realised there are a few things that I wish I knew before I started. And so in today's video, I'm going to share those things with you. And this video is going to be split broadly into two parts. First of all, the skills that you need, and then the mindsets and attitudes you need before going into study. So let's begin with the skills. As you might guess, one of the most important skills when it comes to learning physics is maths. Maths is the language of physics, it's the language of science, and no matter how much you try, there's no getting around the fact that maths is a key component of a physics degree. Now, the fact that you're studying physics probably indicates that you have some proficiency with maths already, which is great. Uh, and even if you didn't get the grades you wanted in maths, that's not a problem. In fact, maths was my weakest subject at A-levels and I still went on to study physics and get a first at the end. Now, when it comes to practicing maths, there are a few different methods that you can use depending on the style that you like to learn and how much time you have. So the first method and perhaps the most basic method is the classic textbook. This is just getting a maths textbook and going through the chapters that you find most difficult or that you need a refresher on or the chapters that are going to come up in your modules during university. So this is the textbook I would recommend for maths. It's called Mathematical Methods for Physics and Engineering and if you're a physics student or an engineering student this is pretty much the standard textbook that you're going to use at university no matter where you go and that's because basically all of the maths that you're going to need throughout your degree is going to be in this textbook and the good thing about these types of textbooks is at the back of each chapter there is a section of practice problems which is the only way you're going to improve at maths is practicing problems and the reason I like the textbook method is because if you do struggle with a certain problem you can literally go back a few pages and there's the whole explanation there. Now if you know there's a specific part of maths that you want to practice but you don't want to go through the textbooks and you don't want to watch lectures then another method you could use is using other online resources. So there's plenty of resources online that I'd recommend. Uh, you could watch YouTube channels like 3 Blue 1 Brown, uh, which give really great maths explanation videos. Uh, or you could use online course websites like brilliant.org, uh, which give interactive courses on maths, which you can sort of practice along while having the explanation given to you, which is a great method. Um, and actually there's a link in the description which you could sign up for Brilliant and get um, a free trial. Or you could use a resource like uh, Khan Academy, which is similar to Brilliant in that it's got a lot of practice problems, but also similar to 3 Blue 1 Brown in that it's got um, explanation videos as well. So depending on how you like to learn, there's all of these resources that you can uh, use to improve your maths. And one thing I would say is don't focus on it too much. You know, you don't need to be a, an expert in maths before starting a physics degree. You'll have introductory courses on mathematics, so you don't have to be an absolute expert. The second skill that is absolutely essential when it comes to a physics and especially astrophysics degree is programming. Now I knew that I was going to do some programming during the degree and I knew that I would take modules on programming which would teach me how to code but I wasn't aware of just how much coding I would do throughout the degree. Not just in the coding specific modules. So when it comes to astrophysics, programming is primarily used when it comes to data analysis and visualization. Now, depending on the courses you take at university, you might be taught different programming languages, but the one programming language I would recommend everybody try to learn is Python. Now, Python is universally used throughout physics and astrophysics for its ability to handle large amount of data, which is what's used a lot of the time in physics and astrophysics. Now the great thing about Python is the fact that it's got a bunch of different packages that you can use depending on your requirements. So if you've got a lot of astro analysis to do, you can use the module AstroPy to perform a lot of analysis and visualization of that type of uh, data. Or if you've got some large data set, you can use something like Pandas or NumPy to sort and analyze and extract information from that data set and then use something like matplotlib to plot your data. So I used Python throughout pretty much all of my degree for the research side of the degree and the research modules. So through first year, second year and third year, all of the little research and programming modules I had, I basically used Python exclusively. So if you are going to study physics, I would highly recommend that you learn Python. It's 
like I said, pretty much universally used throughout all of physics and astrophysics. And it's one of the easiest um, programming languages to pick up as well, which is always great. And the final skill that I think is absolutely essential to a physics student is scientific writing. This is something, again, that you don't necessarily immediately think of when it comes to physics, but being able to write uh, in a scientific style and express your ideas and your results in a way that anybody can understand is an extremely important skill. Now, this doesn't mean writing in an extravagant and flamboyant way. What it means is simply expressing complicated thoughts and complicated ideas in a simple to understand and easily accessible way. One of the best pieces of advice I had during first year was to not write complex sentences, to try and sound academic and try and sound smart. If a simple sentence will do, use it. And I've applied that sort of idea throughout all of my writing and always received great grades because of it. So you might be wondering where in astrophysics are you gonna be needing to write so much? And it's actually far more common than you may think. So for reference, during my degree, I did about three or four little research projects, which sort of built on the foundation of um, scientific writing that I had. And during these sort of little research projects, we was expected to perform the whole research and explain our methods and our process and our results. So being able to write in an elegant manner um, is a pretty important skill as well. So I'd say those are the three foundational skills that you're gonna need as a physics and astrophysics student. Obviously, you're gonna need more skills than that. You're gonna need study skills, exam skills, time management skills. And I've actually made uh, a video on how to uh, study for exams, which I will link up there. But that's not all you're gonna need. Now we'll talk a little bit about the mindset and attitudes that we're going to need in order to succeed at physics and astrophysics. First and probably most importantly, you're going to need to be passionate. Astrophysics is widely regarded as one of the most complicated and difficult subjects to learn and to study. And with good reason. I mean, it combines complex maths with abstract theories in a, a pretty difficult to understand combination. and. If you haven't got that passion, it's going to be pretty difficult for you to see out the three or four years that you're going to study astrophysics. If you're studying astrophysics to sort of prove that you can do the hardest subject or to sort of show that you, you can understand these complicated theories rather than doing it because you want to understand how the universe works and how these, these unbelievable massive structures in the universe uh, come to be, then you're probably in it for the wrong reason. Most of my course mates throughout my degree, which I was friendly with, had a real passion and a real drive to understand the, uh, these complicated and quite abstract theories about astrophysics. Uh, and even, even then, you know, it's, it's easy to lose that motivation um, when you are facing difficult problems or difficult maths. So that sort of underlying passion is really important to keep that drive throughout the whole degree. Second is to accept ignorance. It's easy to go into an astrophysics degree having watched documentaries and YouTube videos and read books on space and astrophysics and think that you've got a pretty good understanding of some of these topics. And the harsh reality is you probably don't. And that's not a bad thing. The best thing you can do is accept the ignorance and embrace the learning process that you're going to have through university. You're going into university to learn the topics. You shouldn't be expected to know everything already. And so I really recommend then, you know, obviously take a massive interest in these topics and watch as many documentaries and YouTube videos and read as many books as you can on the to topics. You know, I had that passion that I talked about in the previous point, but I accepted the fact that I'm not going to know everything about the, the content and the courses that I'm going to do. And that sort of built up a little bit of an excitement for each of the courses. You know, before starting, I knew pretty much nothing about cosmology or um, galactic evolution past the real basics that you'd learn through a YouTube video or through an, an introductory book. But studying those modules actually really sort of built up a drive and a, a passion that I didn't have before starting. So by learning as you go throughout the degree, you're going to sort of uh, build up the drive and the passion that you have for the subject even more than you did before you started. And the final mindset that I think every physics student should have is curiosity. One of the hallmarks of a great physicist and, and scientist more generally is curiosity and the ability to question and test the facts that we accept as truth. 
It's easy to think that the content that you're going to study at university is this well-established science and absolute concrete facts and for the most part it is, you know, thermodynamics hasn't really changed in, in decades or even centuries, um, mechanics haven't really changed in, in centuries, but as you move throughout the degree you get a more, more and more cutting edge and revolutionary science and that stuff is not well established by any means. In fact, you know, every three or four years they probably have to change little parts of the course to, to update it with the new science that's coming out. So the theories that we're learning about galactic evolution or stellar evolution might be completely wrong. Um, but, you know, they are what we, we think of as true right now and as more data and more evidence comes to light, we might change those theories. So having that curiosity to question whether the theories of stellar evolution that we're taught is, is true or whether there's a discrepancy between what we're taught and observational evidence, you know, that is a really important mindset and in fact it's a probably a more important skill than anything. So if you're a physics student who, you know, has aspirations of becoming a researcher, having that curiosity is absolutely vital to question these theories that, you know, may only be accepted as true because everybody accepts them as true and it's just the norm. And it only takes one person to disprove that theory to birth a completely new field of science. So I really think that curiosity is a skill and a, and a mindset that perhaps isn't emphasized enough but is absolutely vital. So those are the skills and mindsets that I found particularly important throughout my astrophysics degree. If you are studying physics or astrophysics, first of all good luck. As I said it's one of the most difficult subjects to study but equally it's one of the most fascinating and interesting so you've got pretty much an amazing amount of knowledge to gain from this degree. If you did enjoy this video and found it useful make sure to leave it a like and if you want to stick around for more make sure you subscribe.